Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Spark Live. Um, of course, we are not Carter and Taylor, but my name is Alyssa and this is Tom. How's it going? How's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, just uh, another Thursday. Uh, Super Bowl's coming up, so that's exciting. Um, yes. Who are you rooting for? I don't. I mean, I just want a good game. I'm rooting for the food. How about that? <laughs> well, being a Northern California girl, of course, I'm rooting for the Niners. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, good to be here. Um, yeah, my name is Tom. Uh, I do the Google Ads here at Spark Marketer. So um, yeah, pretty relevant topic for uh, what I do day in and day out. Awesome. And yeah, I do Facebook ads, social media um, for all the clients as well. Awesome. And if you're watching this, uh, I've always wanted to say this, but be sure to like, share, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, it really helps us get in front of uh, more people and you know spread what we're trying to do here. So um, yeah, I really, really appreciate that. Awesome. Well, you know, as everyone knows, paid online ads can be a really powerful tool for reaching your target audience um, and achieving those marketing goals. But how do you know if your campaigns are truly working? So that's what we're going to be talking about today, uh, those specific metrics and how to optimize. Awesome. Yeah. Let's get right into it. I'm excited. All righty. Um, so let's talk about goals. Um, the first thing that you're going to do when you're thinking about an ad is what is your goal? What are you trying to achieve and who are you trying to reach with your ad? Uh, so whether that's website traffic, collecting leads, boosting brand awareness or driving sales, clearly defining your goals is the first step. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've got a, a form that we fill out um, before we start Google Ads. And one of the questions is, you know, what are you hoping to get out of Google Ads? Um, you know, it's important for us to not assume uh, you know, I'd say 99% of people are just, hey, I want more calls. You know, I want more, um, I want more form submissions, I want more leads. But it's always good to step back. You, if you're working with somebody else or you're doing it yourself, just to step back, like, okay, what am I trying to get out of this? What, you know, what does success look like, um, and how am I going to measure that success? So uh, definitely, you know, before you get started, um, you know, it's something you really want to pay attention to and. Um, like I said, if you're working with somebody, you know, make sure you're on the same page with them about like, what do you want to get out of this? Right. And for example, on Facebook, if your goal is lead generation, you're going to want to cost uh, track cost per lead pretty closely. So that metric tells you how much you're paying for each new lead generated through your ad. Um, on the other hand, if your goal is website traffic, you'll focus on the click through rate, which measures how many people click on your ad after seeing it. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, Google ads, I mean, like I said, most of them are, you know, get more phone calls, uh, get some leads, um, more leads, more form submissions. So, you know, again, it just depends on, you know, what you want to get out of it. If you've got YouTube, you want to do some YouTube advertising, then yeah, you'd probably want to get in front of more people. So impressions would probably be a goal that you want to, um, to set for those campaigns. So yeah, it really just depends. But I think taking that time to either, you know, outline it yourself, um, you know, think about what you're trying to get out of whatever campaign or whatever platform you're using. Um, or if you're working with a marketing partner, like make sure you're on the same page. So they're not just assuming, well, you know, we just, we just want to get you the most clicks possible. And you're like, well, actually, I really want phone calls. So Mm -hmm. Make sure you're all aligned and on the same page. And I hate using aligned because it's such a <laughs> overused term, but you really do want to make sure you're aligned with, um, you know, what your goals are. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, we've been throwing around a lot of different jargon here, so maybe we should cover what some of these metrics mean. Um, so diving into the key metrics. Uh, for Facebook, more so impressions is something that you see a lot. So that's going to be how many times your ad is displayed. Uh, think of it as the number of eyeballs that saw your ad. And then reach is the number of unique users who saw your ad. So that helps you understand how wide your net is actually cast. Uh, clicks, of course, if however many times somebody clicked on the ad and cost per click is the average cost that you pay for each click um, in your ad. So a, a lot of people ask me, um, you know, am I 
Am I paying per click? And that's not necessarily what that means. Uh, what that means is you had a set budget and based on your impressions and reach and clicks, that's what you're averaging per click. Good to know. And if you're watching, if you got any questions, feel free to chime in. Uh, it's a lot more fun when we get questions and we get that audience engagement. So, you know, we promise uh, we won't bite. But yeah, if you've got questions, uh, you know, feel free to ask them. I'd be happy to get an answer for you. Um, but kind of on the uh, the key metrics, uh, one of the things I look at and really when um, I was asked to do this was conversions. And conversions is such a it's a big topic, so I'm going to try to um, condense that into you know just a little bit of time that we've got. But conversions, especially in Google Ads, um, you know, like I said earlier about your goals, most of the time it's calls and uh, form submissions. Um, but in Google Ads, you can set a whole uh, variety of different conversions. Like whatever is important to you and your business, you can set that up as a conversion. So. Sometimes we've got button clicks that we want to track as a conversion. Um, we've got, again, phone calls. Uh, we've got phone calls from the ads itself. We've got phone calls from the website. Um, so it's really important if you're running Google Ads, I cannot emphasize this enough, that you have conversion tracking in place. Um, but when I do audits for accounts, that is the very first thing that I look at. Once I get the login, once I'm able to access any of the, the account, I look to see if you've got conversion tracking set up because I know if you've got the conversion tracking set up, I'll have more information uh, to troubleshoot to see how the account is performing. So um, it's really, really important that uh, that conversion tracking is set up and it's tracking the things that you want to track. Like I said, there's um, calls and form submissions. Those are the big ones. But you know, make sure if that's important to your business, if you want to drive leads, and you want to measure the success of these campaigns, that you've got those set up correctly. Um, otherwise, you will have conversions that are being counted into the reporting, but that aren't actually leads in the sense that you think they are. So that can cause some confusion when um, you know one person or one party is reporting these numbers and then the other person's like, wait, I'm not seeing that on my end. So really, really important that, that you know everything is uh, tracking correctly and you know everyone's able to speak the same language to each other. And again, I keep going back to it, but phone calls and web and, and form submissions are the two big ones that we see. Um, and then kind of akin to that, but it's the cost per conversion. So how much each of those cost? Um, really, really important to know um, you know, how much each that phone calls cost and anyway, how much that's going to cost you. Um, and again, it, it, you know, you did get that by your total spin and divided by how many uh, conversions that you got. And so it's just a really quick way to see, Hey, how, how's that campaign doing? How is that, um, ad group doing? How's that keyword doing? Like how, how are we doing, um, by, um, these, these metrics? Because if not, you just see the, you know, the impressions and the clicks and the co you know cost per click, like all that's inf that's good information. But the thing that I look for the most is conversions and the cost per conversion. So I know it's a lot. I mean, I, I know there's a lot there uh, to, to unpack, but I mean, like I said, I cannot emphasize enough how important that is, especially, you know, just with how in depth um, these campaigns can get um, with Google and the, it's always changing. There's so much going on. Um, with Google and, and I'm sure Facebook as well, but I mean, really, really is important that you know if you if you're running Google Ads, especially, you've got that that uh, conversion tracking in place. Yeah, great point. And definitely, things are always changing, especially yeah. with Facebook. <laughs> yes, yes, Facebook and Google. I mean, Google today they've got their their Bard just rebranded to Gemini, their AI tool. So, I mean, you know, you're trying to keep up with the names and, and it's all just, it's, it's all changing. So, um, and they're doing that, you know, on the, on the ad side too, just with, um, you know, all the, the, the AI stuff that's going into it. And we can get a little bit more into that later. Uh, but there's so much that's going into just um, Google ads with their new campaigns, performance max, you know, trying to reach new audiences. And then, you know, with, without with the cookie, the, the internet tracking cookie kind of going to the wayside, Google's trying to figure out other ways to, to match those ads um, to people looking. So 
lots that lots to go uh, go through so um but let's move on we can keep you know we can talk about the changes of that google's making and, and meta's making all day long so we can right <laughs> well uh you know speaking of changes um this kind of goes along with our our next topic of optimization um making sure you are optimizing your campaigns um so recently i found out um in facebook with targeting your demographics and groups you can actually target people um even more specific than you used to be able to so you can target people who have a birthday an anniversary coming up um so you want to do a special hey it's your a birthday month you get 10 percent off for your birthday uh, they're just adding more and more ways that you can personalize it to people. And I think that's a, a big difference with Facebook and Google is Facebook's really diving into somebody's social life and, and their personal life to, you know, gain traction. Uh, it's really interesting, actually. Yeah, I was going to say, too, I mean, they're and I guess, the you know, to talk about both, you can use both of these together. You don't have to pick one or the other. Um, but they are both paid advertising. I mean, Google is, you know, operates mainly on the keywords. So what people are searching, and I think Taylor and Carter talked about that last week, but it's all centered around the keywords and how you're, you know, how people search for what you do and um, where they are in their, in their customer journey. And Facebook's a little different, you know, Facebook, you know, they've got their feed, they're scrolling down and um, you, you really want to focus in on the, um, the creative, you know, that video or that image to really stop people from scrolling and be like, Hey, that's really cool. That's really interesting. So when you're able to make something, you know, really relevant, um, you know, if their birthday's coming up or something like that, and they, they have their birthday in their profile, you're able to make that ad a little bit more relevant to them just so they're more willing to engage with that or click through. So, um, really interesting how, um, you know, Facebook and, and uh, or Meta and Google, you know, they're kind of two sides of the same coin. You know, they're both paid ads, but they kind of fit into different spots within this customer journey. So um, anyway, go ahead. I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, no, those are all great points. Um, so many things changing. It's it's exciting and a little bit scary because it's like they're getting in our brains. I, I'm sure that you've experienced this. Like you go Google something, for example, I've been Googling, you know, baby food uh, make at home. Right. And mm -hmm. now I'm getting advertisements for different baby food makers on Facebook and Instagram. And it's like they always know what you're thinking about. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, they're they're really I mean, it's kind of a bigger topic, but really trying to create audiences. I mean, Google is trying to interpret intent with even just keywords. And so it's trying to match what's this person searching for? Is it relevant? You know, and trying to group these things uh, together and, and, and use this audience to um, deliver those ads. And so, you know, there's a whole lot of, um, you know, especially on YouTube, I mean, all, all kinds of stuff that, you know, beneath the hood that Google's just kind of matching. And, you know, it, it again, kind of goes back to your goals. Um, you know, a lot of our clients in the home service industries, you know, that's not the biggest priority for them. Um, you know, they're looking for leads, but, you know, we've got more and more that are doing more YouTube advertising and, and using those video assets. And so now it's like, okay, well, how can we use that asset, not only on their YouTube channel, but how can we, what, you know, how can we experiment with some of these audiences and, um, target people who um, are interested in um, real estate or who have recently moved and right. and some of those things. And so again, and then, you know, kind of what you were saying, make it more relevant, you know, make it as relevant as possible. So somebody that is searching um, or even just browsing YouTube, they come across, you know, an ad or a video, you want to make that relevant for them. You want to make that something that's, they'll stop and be like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. And Maybe then they go and do a brand search. Maybe then they go to Facebook to see if you've got a profile. And so all these things, you know, I, we didn't really have a bullet point for this, but a lot of these things fit together. Um, really, you know, there's not one or the other that's better or worse. I mean, it really is a like an ecosystem uh, for how you want to approach it. And that's that's what I tell my clients too. I mean, you know one, you know, just running Google ads, like, yeah, that can do some things. But if you're able to kind of combine 
the audiences with Facebook and then some of the, the actual searches that Google you can in target. That, that's really what is going to set you up for success. Now, I know budgets and, you know, goals like we've talked about before can change. But I think that's something that um, I wanted to emphasize, too, is like it's not, you know, one channel versus the other. They're not really in competition. Um, you know, it really is up to um, you as the business owner to decide, OK, well, what what are we trying to do? Um, and then you can talk with your marketing partner and then they can determine, OK, well, this is your budget here's your goals like this is what we can do we can kind of create a plan uh for how to best maximize that but yeah i want to make sure it's like we're not like facebook versus google versus these things like we're not in a boxing ring i mean a lot of it is working together and how can you maximize you know a reach campaign on facebook and then maybe a branded campaign on google and you know people that are searching that see your ad on facebook maybe they go to google and do another brand search and then there you are. So, you know, those things kind of work together too. So wanted to make sure I said that because, you know, a lot of it's, you know, one or the other and, you know, they're in competition. I don't see it that way at all. And I don't know if you agree, disagree, you know, because you work primarily on the, the the meta side and I'm on the Google side, but I feel like we're on the same, we're on the same team here regardless. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, strength in numbers. If you have the more presence that you have on different platforms, uh, the better, you know, the more that person is seeing your name in your business in different areas, they're going to remember you first. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's Absolutely. definitely true. Um, well, moving on to some other ways that you can optimize AB testing is something that's a lot of fun to try. Um, mm -hmm. I use it a lot in Facebook ads. So basically what that means is you experience uh, experiment with different ad variations, whether that's a different graphic, uh, different uh, targeted audience. Um, and what Facebook does is it automatically chooses a winner and then it will run and push that ad. So it, it's actually really helpful for determining where your true audience is on Facebook. Uh, do you do a lot of that with Google ads? Yes. I mean, I can set up all kinds of experiments. They call it experiments, but you know, I can test two bidding strategies versus each other and say, okay, let's test this on these ads. Um, you know, and so there's a whole lot of A-B testing that I could do too. So um, definitely something, you know, and you, you, you take that and you say, okay, well, did that work? Uh, well, you know, it didn't really work the way I intended it to, or, you know, if it does work, then maybe you can try it on another campaign or another account and see, okay, well, is this something that we can replicate, you know, on other accounts too? So yeah, definitely a big part of, of what we, of what I can do on Google as well. That's awesome. Definitely encourage the A-B testing. <laughs> I've yeah. learned a lot from doing that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, it's, it's one of those, um, you know, you can kind of get creative and, and think about, you know, testing different ad copies versus each other, um, different headlines, um, you know, all all times of things like that. So um, definitely something, you know, if you're if you're savvy or, you know, you want to, I mean, there's there's a whole lot that you can test and, you know, really dive in and just see, you know, hey, maybe this will work better. And if it does, great. If not, OK, well, now, you know. And so it's definitely an, um, definitely something to consider. Yeah. Definitely. And what about landing pages? We use oh, landing la pages a lot. Yeah, I mean, landing pages, and I think that's kind of the, you know, the, I know we've talked about Facebook and Google and how they work together, but really the landing page can make or break your campaign too. I mean, a lot of it is, you know, if you're having trouble with a campaign um, and you, you know, can't see anything that's going wrong, like take, take a step back and look at your landing page. Is it set up to convert well? Um, is the right phone number, tracking number on there? Um, you know, is it showing up on mobile? I mean, is it mobile friendly? So, mm -hmm. you know, definitely something, you know, we spend a lot of time in um, that's, again, kind of an ongoing, you know, conversion rate optimization as customers and consumers' behaviors changed, um, their expectations have, are, are changing and evolving on what they want to get. So yeah, definitely um, you know, landing pages are so, so, so important. I mean, we can do all the A-B testing and targeting and the audience, but if your landing page sucks, they're just going to leave. I mean, they're going to go somewhere else. So, you know, that's kind of the, you know, make or break for the campaign for that, uh, for that ad. And so, you know, it's really, really important 
you know, we put a lot of time, we got a great team that, that looks into these things on the landing page. Like how can we make it better? How can we make it perform better? Because that's, you know, that's the end goal. So um, yeah, I, I mean, we put that in there it's like, yeah, landing pages, you know, we're talking about ads and you know, the targeting and the analytics, but it's like, man, landing page, you know, is so, so, so important uh, for the success of your campaigns. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What about, um, what about pixels? Yeah. So the, yeah, the Facebook pixel, I mean, like that's a, I mean, there's probably tons and tons of videos on the Facebook pixel, but I mean, that's definitely, I mean, if, if you're looking for um, a way to build some audiences and really dive in on um, some of the creative, you know, what really speaks to a certain segment of your, of your audience, mm -hmm. um, building that audience with your pixel is, is so important. And, you know, we don't have time to, to go through, you know, super in depth with, with the Facebook pixel, but it's basically a little bit of code that goes on your website and it allows you to track and really build audiences. You know, who's viewed these pages, um, who's done these actions, who's watched these videos. Um, it's really a good way to retarget people. So, you know, maybe they go on your website, they look at a few things um, and they leave, they don't convert, kind of go back to the conversion. Um, well, you maybe want to hit them again with another ad. Maybe they weren't ready to, to, to call or fill out a form. So it's a great way to build those audiences. And yeah, that's a big, that's a big topic um, in and of itself, but um, it's definitely something you, you know, you want to look at. If you're running some Facebook advertising and doing anything on Facebook, having that pixel um, opens a lot of, a lot of say fun door. I mean, a lot of interesting things that you can try and that you can do. Um, but yeah, we don't have time to, to go super in depth on that, but uh, it is a pretty cool, like I've, I've, I've worked with it some myself and it's, uh, it's got a lot of um, potential. Lots of, lots of fun stuff we can do. Um, the last thing I've got for Facebook is um, utilizing their built-in optimization tools, their Advantage Plus. Um, you know, Facebook, I always tell people, you got to play by Facebook's rules. And and then you'll see good results. <laughs> when you try to go too far away from what they recommend, um, you pay for it. So of course, review everything that it suggests and make sure it truly is in line with what you want. Uh, mm -hmm. But I have found that uh, Facebook specifically, their optimization tools for reaching an audience and uh, the way that they'll just twist whatever uh, copy that you put in uh, to show it to different people. It is actually pretty, pretty smart and it does work well. Nice. Nice. Yeah. No, that's, that's awesome. Um, the, the other one I've got is negative keywords. Um, you know, we, we talk a lot about keywords that you target on Google ads and yeah, that's, that's great. But sometimes there's more power in telling Google what you don't want to have your ad show up for. So a common example I use is, um, you know, a lot of our clients are uh, chimney sweeps. Well, there happens to be a movie that features a chimney sweep, Mary Poppins, and there's a song, so chimney sweep song. So oftentimes I'll add song as a negative keyword because I don't want to reach, I don't want my ad to show for people that are searching for chimney sweep song or chimney sweep costume or chimney sweep Mary Poppins. So <laughs> I add that in because that's that's not who I'm trying to reach. Um, you know, they're, they're, so that, that's a great, you know, again, that's a simple example, but there's others. Um, you know, a common one that I see too, if you do not use, you know, if you don't do any gas work, if you don't do any gas repairs, um, you want to add some of the things that you do not do. So gas is a pretty popular keyword in some parts of the country. Um, you know, fireplace repairs, that's a pretty easy term that people will search, chimney repairs. Um, but if you don't do gas, because a lot of people search gas fireplace repairs. And if you don't do gas, well, you don't need to reach people that are looking for that, right? So, um, so it, there's a lot of power, like I said, there's a lot of power in, in, in telling Google what you don't want your ads to show for. Um, and again, you know, some simple examples there, but, you know, really, really goes back to um, keyword research and, and dialing in your campaign. So they're as relevant as possible. So um, that's a huge one. I mean, I spend a lot of my time 
you know, going through the keywords and, and, and seeing what Google will actually show me. Um, that's kind of the other uh, side of it. But, you know, based on what I'm seeing, then I can determine, okay, well, this isn't really relevant. And let me just add that as a negative keyword. So um, our client, you know, our, our ads, our campaigns won't show for a keyword related to that. So it's, especially movies, you know, there's movies, um, you know, so, I mean, it's all kinds of stuff that, you know, I just rather play it safe and add uh, these movies or, or shows or anything like that um, just um, as a negative keyword. So um, really, really important. That's pretty cool. I didn't realize that, um, that you could do that on Google. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, perfect. I mean, again, we, you know, we talked about Google and their machine learning and, you know, depending on how you're bidding and I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but, you know, there, you know, it's nice to have some control over, you know, telling Google, hey, this isn't, this isn't relevant to what I want. Um, again, not 100% perfect, you know, depending on the keywords and the keyword type that you've got. Um, again, that's, you know, I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but um, it is nice to be able to at least have some of that and just, you know, lay some of that out. I'll even do, I mean, just, you know, if you've got different service campaigns, I'll put negative keywords for the other services. So I'm tr what I'm trying to do is funnel people searching for those services to go to the most relevant campaign. So um, really, really, um, like I said, I spend a lot of my time going through these keywords and, and trying to set up negative keywords. So um, that's a that's one that I don't hear talk a whole lot about, but yeah. it really is a pretty powerful tool. Awesome. Well, uh, let's move into our last segment, <laughs> okay. the human touch and optimization. So as much as we want to be able to rely on AI and all of that these days, uh, it's not perfect. And we do need to review it and make sure that it's appropriate and matches kind of what we're going for. I know that you, um, you know, experience this a lot with Google's recommendations, Tom. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, Google's got, they've got a lot of auto recommendations that you, they encourage you and, you know, in some um, more or less, they encourage you to, to apply these. And I don't do it because it just, you're relinquishing so much control. And, you know, the thing I try to keep in mind and I tell um, our clients too is, you know, Google is not always your friend. You know, you talked about Facebook and how, you know, they've got kind of the built-in optimization tools. Um, you know, Google's got some tools and they've got, you know, they've got their ways, but they've also, you know, they're trying to, you know, take away some of that under, you know, trying to make it easier for you. So they've got all these recommendations about removing keywords, adding keywords. Um, they've got recommendations uh, for headlines and ads. And I've seen the ones that they recommend and they're frankly not very good. So, you know, maybe, maybe in, in the future, you know, they'll, they'll get that dialed in better, but, you know, I think it, you know, comes back to, um, you know, as with all AI tools now, and I know Taylor and Carter have talked a, a lot about AI, but, you know, it really does require a human touch to look at these things and use your judgment to be like, this this headline that you've recommended that you you that you say I need to put in my ad it does not make any sense. I mean it really has no uh, it doesn't add anything. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not gonna add it. I'm gonna remove it. And so, you know, like I said, Google's got some auto recommendations, and you know they might not be what's best for for you and and for your business. So I say tread lightly when applying those because you know again you. It, it, it's not quite the same as Facebook where, you know, you play by Facebook's rules and that, you know, that's how you get more results. You know, I, I tend to look at the, the, the Google recommendations with, you know, a healthy dose of uh, skepticism just to say, OK, eh, you know, this is not this is not going to work out the best. So, you know, but definitely, again, definitely something that, you know, if you do any AI, if you do anything like that, like really make sure you're reviewing it. <laughs> um, with a careful eye because stuff will get added or removed that you don't want removed because 
the AI said so. And it's like, look, I'm not willing to give up <laughs> control to our AI overlords. You know, we're not in the matrix yeah. yet. Like we're not, we're not there yet. So um, maybe in the future, you know, the, they'll, they'll get the AI dialed in better um, to have actual useful recommendations. But the ones that I'm seeing now, I, I very rarely apply um, many of them. So um, again, that's something that if you log in and you're doing it yourself, um, just you know, pay attention to, to some of those things um, again, because there's a there's a lot that they want you to do. I mean, there's um, campaigns that you can add that you know you're basically just like washing your hands. You give them a budget and they just take it and go. And so, yeah. uh, really important that um, you're you're thinking through those things that are getting applied. So I know it's a long long answer, but it really is something that that, that I see day to day. Yeah, it's true. I, I always say. If Facebook will spend your money. Oh Don't yeah, Google. worry, <laughs> they'll do it. <laughs> oh yeah, Google. Uh, same, same with Google. I mean, that's that's the same. I mean, that look, they're they're in the business of making money, and they've yeah. been really good at it. So you know, there's all of these things. You know, it's like, yeah, is this is this helping Google make money, or is this helping me make money? And right. that, that's a good um, check for yourself. And you know, everything that we do, everything that I do, is I'm not trying to pay Google any more than I have to to get the results that, you know, for my clients. So um, again, they're in the business of making money and they've been good at it. So um, just keep that in mind. Yeah, absolutely. I have a funny story about an AI gone wrong recently. I just messing around with the platform, seeing what I can do. And I asked it to create a graphic for me about, uh, you know, chimneys and, and it gave me a, a photo of a piece of salmon on a board. I was like, oh, well, okay. that's not quite it. <laughs> so furthermore yeah. proof that AI has got some work to do. We still need to review everything carefully <laughs> and make Absolutely. sure it's correct. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So anyway, um, you know, just as we wrap up, remembering that optimization is an ongoing process, experiment, analyze your metrics, um, adapt your approach based on your audience and your evolving needs. Yeah, definitely. I just will add real quick. I mean, you know, whatever your reporting is too. I mean, I know this is kind of a bigger topic, but, you know, make sure that you're looking beyond just the number at face value. Um, you know, an, an easy example that I see is just the number of conversions you got. Because again, our, our client's goals is to get more conversions. Well, what does that mean? So I can segment and I can look at, um, the conversion type. So I can see how many calls and I can see how many form submissions. So it helps me understand how the campaigns are doing just from, you know, that perspective, just to add a little bit of context to just the number itself. And that also helps identify um, if there is an issue, if there is a, um, a you're tracking a conversion, that's not really a valuable conversion. Um, if you're tracking just regular clicks on something that might not, that doesn't carry the same weight as a phone call. So um, it's kind of a bigger topic at hand in just in the reporting, but it really, um, really helps to dive into the numbers and dive into the reporting and ask the questions, hey, what does this mean? Um, and, you know, what does this number mean? And how, what does this cost per conversion actually mean? And then if you've got it set up, and you're able to segment and take a take a little bit deeper dive into that into those numbers, um, you're going to learn a lot more. And uh, again, it helps you go back and and troubleshoot if there's something that doesn't look right, um, and gives you a starting point to plan to go forward. So I know we've got a you know we're a little over 30 minutes, but um, it, I wanted to add that in there because it's so important. You know, to when you look at the numbers, when you look at the reporting, when you look at the information that's available to you, it can be overwhelming. Um, and I know there's there's plenty of videos out there, um, courses even to, that you can take, I mean, just to dive in. But there's some, like I said, especially with conversions and, and identifying and segmenting what, what that number is, you're able to make a lot better decisions about how the campaign is actually performing. So um, really, really, um, really, really important to, to understand that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I know we could talk forever about this stuff because <laughs> it can yeah. go in depth, but um, we will wrap up and, you know, next week we've got uh, the HPB Expo. 
So hopefully we'll see you guys there. Uh, I know I'll be there at our booth uh, during the day. Um, and then we are having our client reception on February 13th. So if you need more information about that, just reach out to us and we're really looking forward to it. Awesome. Yeah, it's here in Nashville. Came back to Nashville. So oh. excited for that. Yeah, it's got it. It rotates around. I think it's been a few years since I've been here. So um, if you're going to be in town, yeah, definitely come and stop by. Awesome. awesome. Well, this was fun. Yeah, this is uh, uh, Spark Live. It's uh, also released as a podcast. So you can find it really wherever you get your podcasts. Um, we also send out a, um, a recap. Yeah, let's got the YouTube recording. Uh, we're also on YouTube. So, um, yeah, we can be found. Uh, just check us out. And, um, yeah, please, you know, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really helps us out. Yeah, thank you all for watching. Next week, Carter and Taylor will be back, and they will be doing a recap of all the fun stuff at the HPB Expo. So don't forget to watch that one. Awesome. Sounds great. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.